Hello Captains, this is Justice Plays and welcome to some Star Trek Online news. This is pre-launch news, that is news for the Age of Discovery launch. This is coming out uh, before the Age of Discovery actually launches. I am making this video on the night of, the eve of the Age of Discovery launch. This is 5 p.m. on October 8th, and the Age of Discovery launches tomorrow on the 9th. So I am bringing you some pre-launch news for Star Trek Online. Now, after the Age of Discovery launches, I will probably come back into the uh, Star Trek Online news page here and give you post news updates because they will probably release a lot more news on the main channel Star Trek Online or web page for the actual launch so I will come back when uh, when it's all said and done probably midweek and do a post launch news update but this is a pre-launch update for right now now we do have a lot of things to go over so I'm gonna run through this stuff pretty quickly if there's anything that you want to read in more detail, then just go to Arc Games Star Trek Online or just go to www.startrekonline.com and click on News and you can see exactly what I'm showing you here on screen. And uh, so let's start with the first thing here. Going back to September 24th, uh, they have announced the first mission in the age of discovery <coughs> age of discovery the uh episode is called secrets um let's see i have a special assignment for you a klingon raiding party attacked one of our science stations near the De delta volanus cluster please assist them in any way you can a klingon raiding party attacked a starfleet research facility near the delta volanus cluster but left survivors and took nothing. The station is damaged, however, and the staff could use your help to resume normal operations. Be on your guard. This could be a Klingon ruse. Be ready for anything. If things get desperate, one of Starfleet's top secret vessels is in the area and can assist if necessary. Now, why would they tell you about a top secret vessel in the area? It's not secret if you tell everybody about it. Get on this as soon as you can. Starfleet Command needs to know what the Klingons are up to out there. Secrets is the first episode available to Discovery Era captains after completing the tutorial. It will also be available to 2409 and TOS Era captains as a historical simulation in the mission journal after Victory is Life. Go boldly in the Age of Discovery. So now we're kind of getting an idea of how this is going to play out. There is obviously a Discovery era, era tutorial we're going to play. And then it's going to lead into this first mission that we get to play. Probably a lot like the TOS faction. So uh, again, I'm interested to see how this actually works out in the game. You know, how it's all going to flow. And as I thought, if you are a 2409 era captain, meaning just a regular Starfleet Federation uh, faction, or any, or I guess anyone else, TOS era, TOS era, then it will just be a holodeck simulation of the mission. You can play it, but it will be just a holodeck simulation that you're basically recreating and playing. It won't have any bearing on anything else. And that's pretty much what they did with the Jim Hadar stuff. Uh, and if you're a Jim Hadar character faction uh, and you play any of the Starfleet Federation faction stuff, it's technically just you going on the holodeck and playing those missions from a holodeck recreated perspective. It doesn't really mean anything. You're not really doing anything except playing a recreation. And that's what they're going to replicate here in this for 2409 characters. So we kind of see now how that's going to work. Again, I will cover all of this when this all comes out. I will do a new character in the Discovery era. And I will do the tutorial and I will play the missions and we'll just play all the only the new stuff. Uh, obviously, there's no need to replay all the older stuff that's there, but I will play the new stuff. 
So just note, uh, after the tutorial, it looks like you will have some Discovery Era missions to play. What else do we have? We've got um, the actual uh, announcement here. Discover new adventures this fall. Now this is one of those... I'm not going to read this whole thing here because this is one of those fictional stories they put up. You're welcome to go to the webpage and read this uh, article here and you can read the whole thing or you can pause it and read it. But the, uh, the important parts is right here. Weeks after the battle at the Binary Stars, a lot has changed for the Federation and for your class of 2256. The galaxy is still in turmoil over the beginning of war with the Klingons, but today is a day of celebration. You and your friends, including underclassman Sylvia Tilly, will be taking your first steps into the final frontier. It's a training cruise just to get your feet wet. With the launch of Age of Discovery, you'll be able to create a Discovery Era Starfleet character. Choose from a few Discovery Era races, head out into space on a, uh, a Mal Malchowski, Malkowski, not sure exactly how you pronounce that, class starship, and experience a reimagined starting experience that will begin a new journey in Star Trek Online. So that's how this is going to be laid out. Um, so again, I'm going to run through this myself and we'll get an idea of what all this is like when it actually launches tomorrow and I can play it and together you and me will see what it's like and uh, I will give you my feedback as I play it, of course. So yeah, so it's going to take place in 2256. I guess that's the, that's the year. We'll have to keep that in mind. I'm going to do a little bit of research and get my years together. I'm not exact. I don't recall exactly what year uh, Captain uh, Kirk's original five-year mission started and ended, and then when the movies took place, what years those were, and uh, and then of course Captain Pike's Captain era of the Enterprise because that was before Kirk. I want to try to get um, some of that information so we kind of know you know where we are in the time frame. When we play this because obviously that matters a lot and i think it should be during pike being captain of the enterprise at least that's what it is in the tv show but i'm not sure what it's going to be for the game so we'll see um so there you go that's that age of discovery downfall you were just a cadet stepping out into the cosmos for the first time when the Klingon War broke out. Now it's come home in Downfall, the second episode of Age of Discovery. You'll find yourself standing in defense of Starbase One in what could be her final battle. Enemies, including Jula herself, are going to attempt to take this last bastion of defense for themselves. Only you can stop them. Downfall is the second episode available to Discovery Era captains after completing the tutorial. It will also be available to 2409 on Toss Era captains as a historical simulation. So, uh, there you go. Uh, this is the second mission. We're going to defend Starbase 1. Uh, now is Starbase 1... Is that Earth space dock or is that something different? You guys are going to have to help me fill in some information here because... I don't know. It's maybe the same thing. It's just not, fin you know, completely built up yet. I don't know. Maybe it's a different star base. Maybe it's the same one. I'm really not sure. I know that a long time ago, uh, Earth Space Dock was referred to as as Starbase One, because. People were asking in the in the uh, zone chat quite a bit. It says, go to Starbase 1. Where is that? Where is that? And they're like, oh, it's right here. You're on it. Earth Space Dock is, star, is Starbase 1. But so does that mean that this is like how, star, how Earth Space Dock begins? Like in its infancy? I don't know. I don't know. We will see. Anyway, that's the second episode of the Discovery Era stuff. So it sounds like the Discovery Era stuff is literally a tutorial... And then a series of missions, and then it's and then that's it. Kind of similar to the TOS era stuff. All right, now we've got the ships of Discovery are joining the Infinity lockbox. 
Uh, these have already been out before in another lockbox, but they're joining the Infinity lockbox. So it's a Crossfield class science spearhead, which they changed the name, and I don't know why it was. It was called something different before. Now it's the Crossfield class science spearhead. Um, sarcophagus dreadnought carrier. Here's all the other things in it anyway. But I guess the important part there is just that the uh, discovery is going to be in that lockbox. If you want it, that's how you get it. What else do we have? Age of Discovery launches on PC October 9th. Of course, that's the official announcement. We know that by now. A new voyage of Discovery is about to begin, and we're proud to share it with you. Interact with Cadet Sylvia Tilly. Face off against the sinister Jula. Jula, and I don't remember who the Jula are. Um, maybe they were in the original series, in the, in the first season, uh, but I do not remember them. Maybe I'm just trying to... If, 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 if they were there and I can't remember them, then maybe I'm just trying to erase discovery from my brain. I'm not sure. And take your first steps into a new era when Star Trek Online Age of Discovery launches on October 9th. And then people were asking, when is it going to be for Xbox One and PlayStation 4? It says right here, later this fall. So there's no definitive date yet on when that's coming out. Just later this fall. You'll be able to bring your reputations to a new tier. We are getting a, a reputation tier upgrade to tier 6. Uh, we've, we're going to have these new random task, for oper task force operations, which is really the same thing we've had before, just laid out in a different way, a different way to um, get into them with like random, random queuing. Experience the beginning of a brand new story that will have ramifications for all of Star Trek Online. Now that I doubt, because remember, as the... 2409 character they're just holodeck simulations so they don't really affect anything um uh we'll see what what, the, what their plans are with that i don't know what that means um a swarm lock box so if you want to get your herc on there you go herc lock box and i haven't seen this yet let's see we got a a herc ravager escort carrier Comes with an amplifying Ravager Beam Universal Console. I'm not real into the Herc. They just didn't really interest me as a as a uh, as a species here lately. We just really wasn't interested in them and their ships. I'm also not interested in their ships, but maybe some of you are. And if you are, well, there you go. That one looks kind of okay. That one looks cool. That's the uh, multi-mission science vessel, really. Okay, sure, why not? That looks kind of cool. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all the details on these. You're welcome to come to these pages and read this yourself. Um, but it is going to be, there is that block box going on. All kinds of Herc-based stuff, basically. Okay. Let's move on. Like I said, we got a lot of stuff, and I really don't want this video to be long because um, tomorrow's really the happening day, you know, when all this launches and we get to go in and see all the new stuff and play the uh, Discovery Era stuff. So that's going to be the fun part. Um, if I get, if I do get any of these ships in the future, I will review them, but right now they don't interest me a whole lot, but I'll read up on them a little more. It's got a Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Command Bridge Officer seating. So that's interesting that it's a, uh, it's got, uh, that it's Command, even though it's multi-mission science vessel. There's all the stats on it if you're interested. Definitely, uh, I guess a science oriented ship, but with, does have Commander Science. Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Lieutenant Engineering, Ensign Universal, and then it's got the Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Command Bridge. So you can have command powers on a uh, science ship, basically. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we've got Nullifying Tractor Field. 
Starship trait Hive Bearer. You will tempor temporarily spawn an allied Swarmer pet. And you get Herc Swarmers. That could be interesting to play with the Herc Swarmers. Then here's the Ravager Escort Carrier. If you're into carriers, another one to play with. Looks kind of like the Vorgon one, just painted differently, doesn't it? One Lieutenant Commander Tactical Pilot, one Commander Tactical, one Ensign Science, one Lieutenant Universal, one Lieutenant Commander Universal. So there you go. Amplifying Ravager Beam, Rapid Pulse Ablating Minor Laser, Starship Trait is Nullifier Warheads. While this trait is slotted, activating any torpedo ability, such as high yield or spread, will launch a flood of nullifiers around your ship. So those are the stats on those. Let me know if anybody's really interested in those Herc ships. Uh, I'm not, but if there are, if there is a lot of interest and I can get one of these ships, I will of course do a review on it, but I don't know what the interest is on it. But like I said, the Herc never really interested me that much. Uh, they did at first, but I'm just, I mean, I don't really, I don't feel a desire to fly a Herc ship. It's not like big on my list. Red Alert Special Events. Uh, starting this weekend, Red Alerts are moving from being always available to being special weekend events. Oh, that's not good. With improved rewards. Well, they're improving the rewards, but only as weekend events for these red alerts when these red alerts are live you'll be able to earn 35 marks of your choice every time you play with no cooldowns to prevent you from getting back into the action well that's it's nice that we're not going to have a cooldown but if it's only a weekend event that's very limited because you know that's just a couple of days these task force operations will return to the galaxy regularly as the groups of invaders do their best Oh, wow, this weekend we'll start with a social triple red alert bonus event. The Borg, the Alachi, the Tholian, and Zenkethi red alerts will all be running from 8 a.m. Pacific Thursday, October 4th to 10 a.m. October 8th. So I've missed this already. You can run these events as many times as you like over the weekend to build up some marks. Well, that's cool and all, but I liked being able to just run a red alert Borg or Tholian, or Zenkethi, whenever I wanted. In fact, I used those red alerts to test my ships quite a bit because they were real easy to just go in and uh, get one started because people were always playing them, and you could just go in and uh, I could test a ship, test a ship build out because I knew what to expect, and um, it was just a lot of fun to do that, and now I can't do that. And it was just an, an easy way to get some extra marks. I don't care if the rewards were big were were not that big. I mean, the fact is, you could play it any time you want, so you could play it all day long and get a lot of rewards if you really wanted. I liked that. I liked being able to play them whenever I wanted. Now, we can only play those when Cryptic decides it wants us to play those. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. No, no, no. Another decision I disagree with. It seems like they're scaling back content. Do you get that feeling? I get that feeling. You know, they scaled back the missions. They've taken out the featured episodes as in the mission journal. And yeah, okay, I understand they're still going to be in the game, but you have to go find them. And uh, a new player would not know where to go find them, would not know that they exist. Um... It seems like they're scaling back content. Now they're taking this out of the game until only the weekends they want you to play it. What? Why? Why scale back the content on us? I mean, come on. You have all this good content there and it's, it's free. Just leave it there. Leave it be. Let us play it. The Past Reborn Europa Class Heavy Battlecruiser. Uh, okay, we've got a new ship. The Europa is the brainchild of Advanced Starship Design Bureau 
somebody who has long advocated for experimental tactics and technologies, considering the recent conflicts, I'm just kind of reading over this, the Europa's primary mission is to be the vanguard capital ship for a division or flotilla. Its command and control systems are adequate for the sub-squadron level and can host a small flag officer staff. Well, this is like very official. <laughs> a key technology that makes the role possible is the new structural integrity field linkage system. It uses peculiarities of the Europa's power grid to provide an EM resonance between allied starships SIF generators, allowing overload transfer between linked ships. Okay. It's got redundant SIF generators and hole framing. And uh, doctrine calls for the Europa to actually intercept high intensity energy directed at allied ships, effectively becoming a sump for weapons fire directed at other allied ships in combat. They've added a variety of redundancies and design innovations to the ship's damage control systems, which should, should facilitate fast repairs and expedited SIF field regeneration okay well that's just a bunch of complicated stuff dozens of ships from the mid 23rd century were undergoing repair and refit okay so these are mid 23rd century ships oh so these are what's going to be available for the discovery era stuff Europa Nemesis Battle Binary Stars so I'm not sure if this ship's going to be available, who this ship's going to be available for. But it looks like a looks like a, a 25th century design. So maybe it's a ref, a refit, a redesign, whatever, um, remake of a 23rd century ship. I've never heard of it anyway. Uh, okay. And then here's the stats of it. It's a battle cruiser class. A battle cruiser class. Battle cruiser class. Cruiser. I don't even know. That's kind of a interesting. Okay. Huh. I don't know what to what to make of it. It's a sea store ship. Okay, and it is available to allied members among the Romulan Dominion factions. It will be uh, available in fleet and non-fleet variants. Uh, it's coming no there's a discount on it oh wait no okay fleet version okay All right, never mind it is a tier 6 ship okay it is a 24 25th century counterpart so it is it is made from a or well, it's a remake of a 23rd century ship I'm guessing but it is a tier 6 25th century ship. It's got com uh, Lieutenant Commander Science and Command Specialist seat. So it's Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Commander Engineering, Ensign Engineering, Lieutenant Commander Science slash Command, and Lieutenant Universal. Two Tactical, five Engineering, three Science. So more engineering focused, I guess. Okay, and it's very colorful. So it's got that overload SIF linkage that is the console, and then the trait is called reactive reconstruction. It will unlock the trait when your health drops below 50%, this trait heals you and all teammates for a significant amount, and then increases your outgoing healing. This ability will then go on cooldown for the next few minutes. So that's what it does. Has the Europa class and Nimitz class looks. Now Nimitz class I've heard of. So that's what it can look like. And then the fleet version will have heightened hull strength and uh, shield strength but without the console obviously on the fleet version okay so uh that's a thing coming we'll see how that fits in uh this was interesting i was just uh briefly looking over the news before i started the video shran is back 
but not the Shran, not the original Shran we know from Enterprise. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, a relative of Shran. This is Captain Thakir Shran. So they're going to have a uh, a relative of Shran, uh, you know, one of his offspring. Um, playing a part, but it is still played by Jeffrey Coombs. Combs? Combs or Coombs? Um, he is going to reprise his role as Ashran. <laughs> and we all know uh, his, uh, his voice is quite unique, so I think that will be very interesting to have a Shran here. If you've seen Enterprise, you know how epic Shran was in Enterprise. He, he could have carried the show by himself, honestly. Uh, he was real great, and uh, the ac the actor who played him, Jeffrey Coombs or Combs, however you pronounce it, uh, whatever it is, is um, well known in Star Trek. Very well known. He's played many roles. <laughs> okay, and then uh, free Discovery uniforms are back online, probably for a limited time, so you can get one. Um, tomorrow it says tomorrow which would be what and this was posted on the 8th today so that would be tomorrow on the 9th when this launches you can get a free discovery uniform if you'd like oh and you can create the new you can create the uniform of captain pike from season two as well with the options on it so there you go Oh, now that's actually good. I'm interested in that. Let's see. And with the new editable color, col uh, collar color, you'll be able to create the uniform of Captain Pike from Season 2. Okay. Well, I'd be interested to see that because I think that uniform looks a lot better than this one. <laughs> so we'll see if we can recreate that. But there you go. That's your uh, Discovery era stuff. News. What is it? Age of Discovery. It's coming. Whether you like Star Trek Discovery or not, Star Trek Online is embracing Star Trek Discovery. And it all happens tomorrow, October 9th. By the time you see this video, in fact. Because I probably won't have this video published until tomorrow. But when you do, you will know that age of discovery is online and uh yeah i will cover all of it um like i said i'm a little bit on the more of the um negative side towards discovery i don't feel that it is star trek uh they've taken a lot of liberties and changed a lot of things that should not have changed and make it feel a lot different and uh just doesn't make sense in a lot of areas uh, but as far as Star Trek Discovery stuff for Star Trek Online goes, uh, I will keep a uh, I will keep an open mind. I will go into the content with an open mind, and I will give you my honest feedback and reactions uh, to the new content in Star Trek Online, and I will try to uh, put it in context of the game and see if it fits and flows well for the game see if it will see if it makes any sense for the game and uh, that's what you're gonna look forward to I will make a uh, what's new video going over all the new stuff in Age of Discovery when it launches and I will show you the new mission journal layout on holodeck the finalized final layout and uh, I will see what we can do and then I'm going to do a Let's Play. We're going to do a Let's Play of the uh, Discovery Era Faction. I don't know what they're calling it. They really haven't said Faction, but I guess it kind of almost, it kind of is in their definition of Faction. So we're going to play that, or I'm going to play that, and I'm going to do a Let's Play of that. We're gonna, I'm going to play the tutorial. I'm going to play the missions in order. I'm going to use the ships they give me. And uh, we're going to see all about that. There was one more thing I was looking here, and I might have thought I had put it up, but I 
Missed it. There was something about a starter pack. The age of... Yeah, I missed this. What is this about? The Age of Discovery starter pack. Beginning with the release of our Age of Discovery update, we will be offering a new way to get a jump start in your career as a Starfleet cadet. Aimed directly at players wishing to experience the new Discovery era, era content with a bit of a leg up. This package offers a few unique rewards designed ex exactly to do that. Contained within the Age of Discovery starter pack will be the will be the following terrific items. 12 additional inventory slots, one large experience bonus pool, a Discovery era phaser sniper rifle, and a Discovery era phaser stun bolt pistol, a tartar grade vanity pet, and the Walker class prototype light exploration cruiser, a brand new scaling starship. This new variant of the Walker class represents our first foray into the concept of a scaling starship. Available for use as soon as it can be purchased as early as leaving the tutorial. It will offer hull and shield values that continue to scale up with you as you continue your career. In this way, it offers you the choice to not need to trade out your ship until you are more comfortable with the game and have a deeper understanding of such an important choice means in your gameplay. The starship will scale in this manner until you reach level 30, at which point it will be comparable to any other sea store purchased tier 4 vessel. The experience bonus and inventory slots may only be claimed once, and those items will be bound to the character that first claims it. However, the Discovery Era weapons and vanity pet offered in this bundle may be reclaimed separately from the Sea Store, affording your other characters the options of utilizing those weapons as well. This special promotional weaponry is also designed to scale with you as you level up until level 50, at which point it is roughly equivalent to a Mark 11 item. You may continue to upgrade them beyond that point using tech upgrades. The new starter pack will be available on the C store for a limited time at an introductory price of only 750 zen. Ooh, but act fast. This introductory special pricing will expire soon, after which the pack will return to its normal price of 1500 zen. So there you go. And this is the Walker class prototype light exploration cruiser that will scale with you, but what, only up to a tier 4 vessel at level 30. So obviously after level 30 you will want to upgrade your ship, so it's really only good for the first 30 levels. Now, that's interesting, that gives us an idea that the Discovery Era playthrough, whatever you want to call it, faction, will have all the levels available to us. I guess similar to the TOS faction because it did too. So it won't be like the Jim Hadar faction where you instantly start at level 60 or level 50 or whatever. If this or yeah, it was level 60. This uh, this is going to start you I guess at level 1 <laughs> and work your way up. So that's going to give maybe the Discovery Era faction whatever it's called um, a bit more credibility by having a full leveling experience with it. So here's the details. Tier is scaling. Hull strength 1.15. Okay, so it, it is increasing hull strength up to level 30 and then it's a 28,000 hull strength. So it's not a, you know, tanky ship. And I guess that's because what kind of ship are we dealing with here? It's going to be um, mm, engineering kind of ship, but one lieutenant, yeah, one commander engineering. So it's kind of engineering oriented. Two tactical, three engineering, and two science. And plus five to shield power, engine power, and oh, ox power. Do a little science. But it's got the cruiser communications array. So it is technically a cruiser. I mean, it says so in the title, I guess. Cruiser with engineering but maybe a tad size because it's got plus five to auxiliary power. 
Hmm. And it does come with a universal console, the cyclical polarity modulator. Uh, by continuously adjusting the modulation of the ship's shield polarity, you can cause your ship's shielding and hull to become highly resistant to impacts, making them much better and able to withstand kinetic damage. It also absorbs ambient energy. Okay, I have no idea what all that will mean, but we'll see. And it does not have a starship trait because it's not a tier 6 ship. It also has no mastery package because it's not a tier 6 ship. So just keep that in mind. It's got a neat console, but it's a tier 4 ship. Can Klingons, Federation Allied Romulans, or Federation Allied Dominion purchase the bundle? or reclaim the weaponry. They cannot purchase the bundle as most of the contents are gated to the Federation primary allegiance. If purchased on a Federation character, these, char these characters will be allowed to reclaim the weapon separately. Do the bridge officer seats or other inventory slots scale with level? No, you will have the full inventory and seats available on the ship as soon as it's commissioned, regardless of your current rank. However, higher rank seats may only be utilized by crewmen that have been promoted to the appropriate rank. So you'll have access to all the seating on it. You just won't be able to slot the people in there until they reach the right level. You know, you have to upgrade, you have to upgrade them as you increase in your skill level. Does this version of the Walker class offer any new customization options? It does not offer anything new, but instead maintains the screen accurate aesthetic already established. Is there a Discovery Era bridge interior? This ship comes with the Walker class interior, like the T6 version. So that, that is important. There is a T6 version of the ship, but this is basically a T4 version of the ship. It's a downgraded T6 version of the ship as a T4 to give players who want to play Age of Discovery in an era specific ship and a level appropriate ship for their leveling. I, that's what I see this as. But the, it begs the question, what ship are we going to get as a Discovery Era captain? When we start off the game, well, we're not going to be flying, we can't be flying a regular 24th century or 25th century Federation ship. Because uh, this is supposed to be the mid-23rd century. So um, it's interesting. I don't know what ships we're going to start out with. So... I kind of want to do two playthroughs of this, knowing this now. I want to do one playthrough where we do not have the starter pack, and we can see what ship we we get without that. You know, what ship do you just get for free? You know, what kind of ships do we get to use in the Discovery era? And then I'll, I want to do a second playthrough where I do have the starter pack. And we have the Walker, this uh, T4 Walker class ship, and we can kind of use it as we level up and see what that's like playing on this uh, tier leveling, auto leveling ship. That should be a unique experience. That, that way we kind of have two experiences. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do. And I'll make it very clear when I start the playthrough which what I'm doing. Am I using the starter pack or not using the starter pack? The first playthrough, I will not use the starter pack. And we will we will just go with whatever we're supposed to get. And then the second playthrough, I will use the starter pack so that we can get that experience on that Walker class ship. How does that sound? I think that'll be a good a good way to compare the two. And have two uh, gameplay experiences there. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing most likely. But I need to get my pack now while it's 750 Zen. Because I definitely don't want to pay the 1500. Okay, so that's the deal. And I guess there's no other, you know, like expansion packs for this. Sometimes they have more expensive expansion packs that give you like a whole bunch of ships and stuff. But... That's not really what this update is about. It's not really an expansion. It's not really a new faction. But yet at the same time, it kind of sounds like a new faction. And you got to wonder what kind of starships they're going to have available for you. And so I don't know how it's going to work out, guys. I'm in the dark just as much as you are. And we're just going to find out together tomorrow what happens. Because I just don't know. But we will see. We'll play this. We'll have some fun. 
and uh, you can watch along and see if it's something you want to play as well and get into. Well, that's what I got. Like I said, I will make another post-launch news video a couple of days from now. I'm going to give it a couple of days, let them come out with some new you know, post-launch news because they'll probably have more, more news updates that are relevant to the Age of Discovery after it launches, and then I'll do that. But I will jump in tomorrow and do a What's New video so that you can see what to do with this new update as a, a new character or as an old character. We'll see what we can do with this new update. Okay, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next one.